Welcome to the Fabric Podcast, where we explore company culture and how it scales as a company grows. Brought to you by the team at The Receptionist, a bootstrapped Denver-based software company. Each episode of Fabric will set out to uncover unique and uncommon answers to the question, how do companies of any size create a culture and core values that employees actually live out? On this episode of the Fabric Podcast, we're joined by our founder, president, and CEO, Andy Alsop. In March, during the early days of COVID hitting the U.S., Andy joined us to talk about how we were doing as a company. We could not have predicted we'd still be in the middle of the pandemic nearly seven months later. Andy shares openly about how we're doing as a company, how our team members and customers have been doing, the evolution of our product, and what it's been like as the founder of the company to go through this unprecedented time. Throughout the last seven months and within this episode, our values have been clear and strong, and they have made us all feel so thankful to be a part of the team at The Receptionist. Enjoy the episode. Andy, I'm so excited to have you back on the show. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you, Sarah? I'm good, thanks. So on way back in March, on March 26th, we recorded an episode about how we were handling COVID, and it was sort of in the very beginning for the United States of what was happening. And here we are. Nearly seven months later, coming back for an update. And for our listeners, we're recording this on October 1st. Yep, 1st, 2020. So let's start with an overview of where we're at now as a company and and just kind of what's been going on. Well, first of all, I thought we were going to have this wrap up podcast maybe in the summertime at some point. I know, I know. So this is uh, really an interesting time. Um, It has been extraordinary, I have to say. And but I have to say that the receptionist has done very well through uh, through this period. Uh, things are different. Uh, lots of things are different. How customers buy our product, which customers are buying our product, why they're buying our product. Our employees and our team is uh, rock solid. We did have to slow down some of our hiring, but you know, in in many cases, companies had to lay off people. Cash is good. So I've got to say that I definitely wake up almost every day feeling lucky for the position that we're in. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been so hard for so many people. And I think we're all very thankful that we are with this company and where we are. Now, logistically, share with our listeners, where are we at? Because some people are still working from different places around the country. What's going on with us logistically? Well, you know, the beauty is that as you know, and I think as our listeners know, that we were doing sort of a hybrid model. I would come up from Santa Fe, which is my uh, home, my home, up to Denver every other week. And when I came to Denver, that was the time we all got together in the office. We had our company meetings and everything. So since we were basically half remote and half in person, it was super easy for us just to say, okay, well, we're just going to go all remote. So, you know, some employees ran into the office and got some pieces of equipment like monitors, things like that, and then started working from home. But logistically, for the most part, we're still remote. I was just up in Denver, I think it was week before last, and uh, in the co-working space that we're in, in industry on Walnut Street in Denver, uh, we, uh, there was, you know, between maybe three to 400 people in the building at a time pre-COVID. Now maybe 10, 15 people in the building. So it's definitely from that perspective is feels like a ghost town. But what we are doing is we uh, are, you know, some employees are feeling a little safer coming in. I've definitely said nobody has a mandate to come in. I don't want anybody to feel unsafe about that. But I think a couple of employees are starting to trickle in. And in Denver, uh, right now, you can have a, a, a maximum density of 50% of your company. So um, now it's only a few com- a few employees that will come in at a time, and it'll only be a few employees here and there, but they're kind of trickling in a little bit. They want to be back in the office. They want to see each other and things. So that's really nice. Um, the last time I was up there, you know, our director of sales was there, and Tom Foster, and several other people. And it's just really nice to see some people. And, and some of these people I hadn't seen since March. Uh, in fact, uh, Corey, who was the last uh, employee to jo- join the company, came into the office. I had not seen her since March, and I think I might have seen her twice in my whole life in person. Yeah. 
Yeah, she we just had her we just had her on the show and she started a handful of days basically before we had to leave. So yeah, I imagine that was right. strange. Oh, hi. It was <laughs> good to see you. It again. was <laughs> it was cool to see her and I actually, you know, had a, a quick conversation, of course, socially distanced with our masks on and everything, but just nice to kind of catch up and have that human experience. So that was nice. Yeah. Do you have a sense of when we all will be able to be back in the office together, back to our sort of hybrid schedule? Oh, man, I have no idea. You know, with the density rules that Denver's put in, I don't think there's any way we're all going to be coming back anytime soon. And I think it's going to be when there is a, a vaccine and that vaccine is broadly available. And who knows when that's going to be. So really, I don't have any any time frame on that. Yeah. I mean, we're still obviously very much in the pandemic and obviously things are improving in lots of places. We're seeing numbers go down, which is fantastic, but it's, we're still very much in it. So can you just share us with us a little more? How are our team members doing through all of this? I know it's been good to see each other a little bit more and, and some are still staying away, but what's the sense of how the team is doing? I think, you know, that's a, that's a, an excellent question. It, it, it's hard, you know, it's been hard for team members because now we're isolated. Um, we have a lot of team members who are home. And I think it's kind of a representation of the bigger population or the larger population. Uh, I know I run into people, not necessarily in the company, but people who say, I kind of like COVID. <laughs> it means I get to stay at home. I get to be at home and I like being home. Yeah. Others are like, no, this is, this is really a, a taxing. So when I talk to different members of the team, I talk to them about it. And some of it can be stressful. Some of it can feel isolating, but at the same time, there's something that we had talked about, I believe, in the last um, episode in March, and I'm so happy we put it in place, which was the COVID family tra uh, travel program. Yep. Because the problem was that all of a sudden, employees were no longer going back to their homes to visit their families, and they were feeling isolated. We put that in place, and I wasn't really sure how popular that was going to be. And I would say that more than 50% of the employees have taken advantage of the program and they've gotten to go back home to be with family, friends, and things like that, obviously socially distanced. They're not going into big, you know, family gatherings. And I think, I'm hoping that's helped. I've had, you know, some employees reaching out and saying, thank you for offering that. That really made it made a difference. So that obviously doesn't take the place of the normalcy that we had prior to, to March, but it's it's a little thing. Right. Well, and one of the things that we love about our company is that we enjoy each other and we have fun together and we like being around each other. So that's that's hard to separate from that. Now, if you weren't enjoying work and you didn't like your coworkers, yeah, that would be enjoyable to now not have to be around them. But but that's not the case for us. So yeah, it's it's hard not to be able to see each other and get together as a team. It's true. And you know, we have these live stand-ups on Thursday morning, and that's where everybody gets on a Zoom call. And we go through, you know, we do a, a typical stand-up of reporting what we've done. And we've, we've mixed up our stand-up even. And we've said that, you know, talked about, like, what did you have for dinner last night? What, what shows are you into? You know, like, not making it all about work right now. Right. Because work is, work is good and it helps people kind of have a distraction from what's going on. But almost every report afterwards is so happy to see all the faces on the call, you know. And so that, I think, is really there's still that sense of connection, even though we're on Zoom all day long, it's still that sense of connection. We're all together. We're seeing each other's faces and we're hearing things like, oh, wow, you, uh, you're you watching Cobra Kai or, you know, you just saw that movie or whatever it is. Yeah. I know I've learned a lot of things. I'm like, wow, that sounds like something to be fun to binge watch. So, yeah. You know, but I think so that it, as much as you can make connection without being in person, I think we've done a, a pretty good job at that. Yeah. And I think overall, you know, our, our team members, they're, they're tough, they're resilient and, and we'll get through this, but what, how are our customers doing? Obviously we spend a lot of time working with our customers, talking to them. What sense are you getting about how they're doing and how have we continued to support them throughout this pandemic that we did not expect to still be talking about right now? I know. Uh, well, it has been extraordinary also to see what's happened with our customers. If you think about it, our software is what is put into offices when visitors come into an office. Right. A lot of offices are closed right now, so it makes it challenging. I know that it doesn't matter whether it's uh, ourselves or one of our competitors, we're all experiencing the same thing. And the customers are calling us and they're saying, you know, we're not using your software right now. And this isn't all of our customers, but some of the customers 
whose offices are unnecessary, where the workers don't have to be in the office, they have called and asked for pauses or they've asked for cancellations. In many cases saying, don't worry, we're coming back once this is all over, but we just want to cancel for now. We have to look at the bottom line and we totally get it. And what we've done is we've taken a stance of how can we help you get through this? And we have had so many compliments from the customers saying, that was the easiest process. You made it easy for us. We are, and, and what I love about that is that creates loyalty in the customers. Now, on the other hand, there are customers who need our software. Uh, we just did a, um, what we're calling a deep dive interview with a customer yesterday. And that customer uh, is in the retirement community space. And well, you need to be open when you're in a retirement community, but you also need to keep the residents safe. And what I found about this this interview was just how uh, important our software is to helping them. They even said, ah, we might not have even looked for this software pre-COVID, but we knew we had to keep the, the visitors safe. I'm sorry, the, the residents safe. And we need to screen our visitors when they came in. They, they, aren't, they didn't have a lot of you know, general population visitors because they're keeping it to only those that are necessary, but they have contractors, they have hospice healthcare workers, that kind of thing. And it was just really heartening for them to hear them saying how important this software is to keeping the residents safe. They even said, we're helping them save lives. And that meant a huge amount to us. The other is uh, what we call the supply chain. You know, everything from transportation, packaging, manufacturing, food manufacturing, all of those businesses need to stay open and they want to protect the people who might normally have been at the front desk you know, uh, helping visitors come in and connect them to the people they're there to see. Well, now our software is helping them do that as well. So it's, it's sort of been what has maybe gone down has been eclipsed by what has gone up. So the company in, in total has been doing much better. And to hear the stories from our customers and how we're able to help them has really been heartening. And just knowing that our software really is helping during this crisis. Yeah, I feel like the, the work becomes even more meaningful. I mean, we really believed in it before. It was helpful and useful. And now it really, it's gone to a different level of, about safety, not just ease of use, but really protecting the people who need protecting, which is pretty amazing. It, it is, it is. It's a, it's an, I, I would not have been able to predict that. We, we did, you know, kind of know, okay, when, when it comes to supply chain and things like that, we know they need to remain open. But then we've been interviewing customers and the stories we're hearing have just been, it, 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 I just am kind of blown away every time I hear um, some of these stories. So it's been fantastic that way. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about the actual product and how has it evolved during this time? Because in late March, we had adjusted to include screening for visitors and we were educating our customers on that. We've shared on the podcast about how we introduce contactless check-in, but have there been any other changes during this time related to the pandemic? Yeah, there have been. And I just have to say, Delenn Berry, our director of engineering and his team have done an amazing job at this. I mean, at one point, you know, just something really simple, adding a temperature field to the check-in process, because uh, now people are, are taking people's temperatures. They just said, let's add that. And then, of course, we did the contactless feature. And then what we found is that while well, you're not checking in visitors anymore, but you're checking in employees because let's say it's a manufacturing facility or whatever. And so what's happened is we've increased the functionality of our employee check-in so that our customers can use that. When they might have been using the software for doing visitor check-in, now they're using it to screen their employees so that they can ask them the typical COVID questions or they can have them enter in a, a temperature that, that when they read their temperature. So being able to turn on a dime like that has been amazing. And the, the comments we've received from our customers having, if they went out and looked at other contactless solution, they've said this has been really a feature complete contactless solution that has no bugs and really works well. So it's been met with some great, uh, great feedback from the customers. And then what we've been doing is we've done contactless live demos um, and our live demos are, they're, you know, a webinar is usually kind of a one-way presentation, a live demo is actually a live demonstration of our solution. And we've done 
several for our contact list, and we just did one for our, our employee check-in. And we've had hundreds of people signing up for these live demos, and they're incredibly engaged. There's clearly a demand for that, and it's a really important piece of technology. So those are some of the things that we've been doing with the software, and we have a, other things planned as well. That's great. Well, we've heard how the software is doing, how our team, our customers, how has this been for you as a founder to see your company roll through these waves over these last seven months? I, I got to say that I've been uh, uh, brought to tears a couple of times just seeing how the team has been responding to this and how our, our culture, which of course we call this the Fabric, Fabric Podcast, how our culture and how strong it is has impacted going through a crisis like this. I mean, I think this is the worst crisis that any of us have seen in our lifetime, and some people who have been around a lot longer. This has a, a, been a, a, a terrible, a horrible crisis, but our team has, st has remained strong throughout it, and we've supported each other, and we've worked together. We've come up with innovative ideas, and, and I've been able to, to look at our team and just say, look, we are, we're strong. This is our, I, I'm an, I run an open book company. So all of us know what the finances are in the company. And so uh, we were able to secure a PPP loan, pretty much like every business out there. And that PPP loan wasn't there to try to kind of support the company from collapse. It actually added to our cash balance. And it's allowed us to give us just that little bit of extra uh, let me say, confidence to go and hire. So we have two people we're hiring right now. We have not, we, we were planning to pro pretty almost double the staff that we were in, in, in at March had our growth plans continued. Our growth plans weren't as strong, so we definitely sl slowed down our hiring. Um, so we're not going to get to the numbers we thought we were at the end of the year, but we are hiring. We are growing. Nobody had to take any uh, salary cuts. We were able to implement programs like the COVID tra uh, tra family travel program. And we were able to really stay strong throughout it all. And that's what kind of brought me to tears at time is just to see how our team has responded to this crisis and really stepped up. Yeah, well, it's, it's glad, I'm glad to hear that it's sort of those good tears, right? Of how well we're doing and that we right. can continue to grow versus I'm sure there are founders who are in tears for having to let people go and maybe even dissolve their company. I mean, this has been a horrible time. So how nice that, that you have run things so that that's the complete opposite and we are in a very good position and continuing to grow. Yeah, that's a, that's a great clarification, I'll say. I wasn't brought to tears because yeah. I was thinking, I <laughs> was brought horrible. to tears of like, so yeah, no, but I was brought to tears yeah. of just like how, how this has all worked out and how great of a team. So it's tears really of joy and pride yeah. for what, we, what we've been able to do. Well, and it's nice to have those sorts of moments in all of this. You know, there's just so much challenge and, and negativity and unpredictability. And so to still have those moments that you just, you can feel so confident in and so good about and just, it's, it's, it's nice, I'm sure, as a founder to, to be able to feel that. Yes. And to have employees coming to me and to other members of our leadership team and saying, you know, when this, this happened or uh, further along in the evolution of COVID that people were losing their jobs and that a lot of employees were saying, I am so happy that I still have my, I feel grateful that I still have my job and not only do I have my job, but we're, we are thriving. So there's a lot of gratitude there as well. Absolutely. Now you touched on this a little bit, but how are we continuing to live out our values and maintain company culture during these ongoing unprecedented times? Well, the beauty is that if you start with your culture and you implant it and you make sure that you live to your culture, it becomes easy to get through a, a crisis like this. Yeah. And I know that in past episodes, you've asked me, you know, well, if you're going to implement code culture, when do you do it? And I've always said from day one, and I'm so happy that we did because with that, that culture in place, it wasn't like I had to round up everybody and say, come on, we're going to get through this together it was already ingrained in what we were doing. And so everything that, you know, even, you know, F is, is for fun. And we've said, okay, well, what can we do to have fun throughout all of this? And, and how can we be authentic? And how can we be bold? And how can we be respectful? And all of those things came true 
and we just kind of fell back on those on those core values uh, without having to really do anything else. So I think it is it has brought us together, and I think the core values have become, if nothing else, even stronger than they were before. It really is amazing. Well, as we wrap up this episode and we end into this final quarter of the year, any final thoughts on this this topic or this situation we find know. ourselves in? <laughs> anybody out there could tell me when this is all going to end I I'd love to know but um no I think that it's I, I'm really proud and I just do I just want to make another shout out for our team and for our customers they've all been great through all of this our team has been fantastic with our customers and and we've been there to support our customers and I feel like we've gotten a lot of positive results out of it so that's all I really have to add I'm I'm I did. Somebody did ask me, so uh, how are you doing through all this? And I said, I feel a little um, embarrassed to say this, but I'm actually having fun running a company through COVID. And that is because of our culture and, yeah. and the team that we have and the people that we have. So can't be more proud. Great. Well, at some point, we hope to do a wrap up to this series of COVID related podcasts of where we're at. I don't know when that will be. We might have to do another one in between, but we look forward to, to having you back on again. So thanks so much, Andy. You're welcome. And I, I look forward to having a uh, COVID wrap up podcast. Hopefully in the not too distant future. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. It's been so nice to share with you where we're at as a company. And we are so thankful for our team, our customers, and our listeners. If you want to learn more about The Receptionist and get a two-week free trial, no credit card required, visit us at thereceptionist.com.